Gentlemen, welcome back to the T. Shanley Starting a Business, Building a Brand blog. This one, big number 278. So let me read you the uh, little paragraph they have in this beautiful picture of me, right? Good, decent picture. It's from Atlanta Magazine, right? I was super excited. I'm like, all right, we're going to get some info about, about the salon in there, right? So, great, awesome. Well-groomed. It says, Marietta's Aaron Marino proves savvy style advice isn't just for the queer eye gang. Really? Like that, like really? Like that's how, that's how you, that's how you need to go. All right. So you're like, all right, what's, what, what else is there? Uh, another, another, another page, some style tips. And that is the picture of the freaking salon that they picked. <sighs> you know, there's something about expectations that are, are tricky, right? Because when you expect something, you know, oftentimes we build things up bigger in our head and we're oftentimes disappointed. This was one of those times where I was excited about being in the magazine. I thought it was gonna do some good things, being a local Marietta thing or local Atlanta thing. It's, it's in Atlanta Magazine. I thought, okay, great. The piece is gonna be about the salon. We're gonna get some business. It's going to really like put it on the map. I was excited because, you know, they came and they took a picture of like Stephen and I hanging out. I thought Stephen was going to be in it. And the reason why I even got in this was because the, this woman that I know who is an art director here, or not an art director, she owns a gallery here locally. And she told one of the editors or one of the writers, hey, you should follow this guy. He's doing this thing in Marietta, the salon. So it came about because of the salon. And so when they, when they reached out to me, they're like, hey, you know, we'd be interested in, in doing a piece on you. And I said, okay, great. This is awesome. Let's, let's talk about the salon. Let me introduce you to Steven. If, if, if you want to talk to him, it'd be better to talk to him than me. I was doing it because I thought this was going to be a great opportunity for the salon to get, you know, publicity. And what it turned into is, and, and, and you know, it's, this comes back to like all publicity is good publicity. I guess so. But some publicity really kind of is disappointing when you expected different kinds of publicity. And so long story short, it's a huge failure. It's, it, it's a huge fail in terms of what I intended and hoped for this piece to actually be. You know, now some of you might be like, yo, Alpha, you've gotten an Atlanta magazine, dude. Just to having, having them do a piece on you is awesome. And it is, and I'm thankful for that. But I don't need my ego stroked. I'm like, I'm good, right? My ego is absolutely fine. I get it stroked <laughs> enough, you know, doing other stuff. It was just disappointing. It was disappointing more. What I'm really disappointed about, what I, if I'm being honest, is that Stephen wasn't in the article. And when I when I got interviewed by this woman who was the writer, she was like, "Hey, you know, let's." She was asking me all these questions, and she was really taking it towards like the YouTube angle and the men's styling tips and stuff like that. I'm like, "Hey, I'm like this is all great, but why don't you talk to Stephen?" And I really tried to always like bring it back to the salon and let's talk about that and let's have you know, some pictures of it. And, um, and she didn't really do that. And she was like, okay, well, let's talk about style tips. I'm like, okay. And she's like, we want the piece to really be about, you know, men's style. I'm like, oh, shit. They did put some Pete and Pedro products in there. What exactly? Can you even, like the sales spike that I saw? I'm kidding. There was no spike. There was no calls. There was no anything other than a few people being like, hey, I saw you in Atlanta Magazine. Something else that I realized after I got the magazine and actually looked through it. The, the, it's been so long since I've actually looked through like a local magazine. Literally, this whole thing starting like, literally starting on page like 84, all it is for the rest of the magazine till 106, so almost 100 pages of this 200 page magazine is just basically doctors and people trying to advertise like their services. Like, and I, get, and I get it, right? Because that's how these magazines are making money. Like, because people aren't buying magazines like they used to. They're getting everything online. And so it was really, <laughs> really disappointing. Actually, you want to see something else? All right, so this was my first magazine that I was ever in. It was Jezebel. It's kind of like a local Atlanta, like, luxury magazine. Anyway, I, I, the way that I got this is I, I sent him an email. I emailed the editor and said, hey, I'm an image consultant. I'm helping guys. This is what I do. It might make a great piece for your, your, you know, your, your magazine. And they actually contacted me and said, hey, great. Like, let's talk. And so this, this suit, like, check it out, right? 
What? Look at that suit. I was killing that three button baggy thing. This article was awesome, right? I had a page here. I had another page there. I even had, had a page. Look, 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 look at those jeans. Look at this outfit. This, when was this actually done? This was right 2008. So like, what was that? Like, four, 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 like uh, 13 years ago, um, when I just started doing like image consulting, this was actually before I was doing YouTube videos, I was trying to be like an image consultant. And so um, this was awesome. And so when I decided, or they offered me this, I was like, oh, this is gonna be like very similar. And I really thought it was gonna be cool for, you know, for the salon, like I said. And it, it, it did absolutely like squadoosh. Now I'm not saying poor me or anything like that. Please don't think that. I'm just letting you know that I was super excited about this. I thought that this was going to put um, the salon on the map, but something else that we did that may put the salon on the map if we actually win is we submitted for salon of the year. And um, I thought it was just going to be like some like, you know, little tiny thing. It's apparently like this big deal. And it took like five people like a week and a half to actually get through the application. They asked about you know, the building, the renovation, the light fixtures, the this, the that, like it was really, 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 really in depth. And so if we could win that, it would be amazing because it really would put us on the map in terms of just a destination and give us some credibility and, and recognition. Um, give you a little update on the salon. Things are going really well when people don't have COVID. Um, Two of our stylists actually got COVID, um, not in the salon, but they each like independently like got COVID. And so um, that sucks, right? You know, you, you don't, you hope it doesn't happen, but you kind of are playing the odds, right? When you have 20 or 30 people, you've got to just trust that they're being as safe as possible outside of work. You know, unfortunately these people, they, they got sick, they got tested, and we actually made every single employee now two times go get tested and they couldn't come back to work until they actually uh, had a negative COVID test. Because it's something where you just gotta really be careful. And so it sucks though, because if that, like if it did happen where, you know, people in the salon and a bunch of people, like they all, you know, it's, it, it's just, it, it's, it's tough. And so, you know, we're still not out of the woods, even though a lot of people are getting vaccinated, you know, numbers are going down. It's still a reality that we are having to be very, very diligent about in terms of keeping everybody as healthy as possible. But it sucks. You know, a lot of these people that are, that are, that are employees, you know, even if they're not feeling 100%, a lot of times they'll still like come to work. Not like now, it's a different sort of scenario now. But think about it, right? If you are making, if, you're, if your job and your income is reliant upon you showing up and making money and hourly wage and not having like technically like sick days, there are a lot of people that'll just come to work. Like, you know what? I got to do it. And this is something that I think a lot of people have done during this whole like situation. You know, you're not feeling hundred percent. If you don't go to work though, you're not making any money. And a lot of these people aren't killing it, aren't you know, making you know, $100,000 a year and all that good stuff. It's something that you just also need to be aware of. So if you are a business owner, understand that you need to be still incredibly diligent about checking temperatures, making sure people are wearing masks, because if it, if it starts spreading and going crazy in your facility, you literally could be shut down. Now, if that happened for us, um, you know, we can handle it because we, you know, I'm the landlord and so I can afford to not take rent because I don't have any debt on the property if that needed to happen. But the other cool thing is that I did actually get my first rent check this month, which is awesome. Something else that's awesome business related that I'd like to talk to you a little bit about is that whole business, that fund that I started with Eric Van Holtz, Ryan Masters and Antonio Centeno. It's called Area 627. Go to Area 627, area627.com. We got a bunch of people that actually had real businesses that had submitted applications. And so last week and this week, we are actually going through and talking, we're scheduling like 30 minute calls with the companies that we are interested in talking to. We got a lot of people, but some of these, some of the companies, you know, aren't where we need them to be. Like I may have mentioned before, we decided that we needed a threshold. Like in order for you to be somebody that we'd talk to and possibly help invest and, and invest in, you gotta do at least $100,000 a year, right? If you haven't figured it out to that degree yet, 
we don't want to be there to really try to like help you figure out your business. But if you're making a hundred grand, $10,000 a month from your business, it's a real business and you have proven that you're doing something right and that people are interested in buying what you're selling. Because the first, or I should say the hardest thing is to sell that first item. We had, last week we had four calls. This week we've had two. We've got another one today. I've got one at four o'clock. And we have decided on one investment so far. And it's really fun. <laughs> it's so fun talking to these people, almost like, like a Shark Tank scenario. And the thing that I love so much is, is these entrepreneurs, like some of them, you know, some of them are super excited and passionate, but you can see some of these people that are really, you know, hurting and struggling in terms of emotionally. Keeping a positive mindset while you're struggling, while you're starting a business is half the battle, right? Because once you go like negative and sort of dark, it's really tricky. You know, this one dude that we talked to, super great guy, super smart. The business seems like it could potentially be good, but there's a lot of hill to actually climb in order to, to make it work. It was in the uh, prepackaged like coffee industry. Anyway, you know, he had two other co-founders. They're no longer with the business. They left the business. Old boy is still doing it, still grinding it out. But, you know, you could tell just that he was not defeated, but he was not like super like excited and amped up. He was struggling a little bit. And so, you know, really that, what that showed me is, because, I, because here's the other thing. We talked to other people in the coffee industry that are killing it, doing incredibly well have a super big like PO with Trader Joe's. It's not like the, pre the cans, it's actually like the coffee, crushing it. Like potentially could be like a big monster company at some point. And it really looks like it could be on that way. It's not for us though. And the reason that's not for us is because we don't bring any value to that table, right? They really just needed financing and money in order to fulfill a PO. Now, this might be a great investment for like an individual or a firm that has a lot of money that is just looking to invest in fast growth businesses. This business is definitely a fast growth business, but for us and the reason why we started Area 627, it was not just to give people money and be like, good luck, hopefully we get our money back. It was to be able to help people that are like on the brink of figuring it out. And the other thing is that we are looking to invest in companies that are e-commerce based, right? And so this one company that has the big like PO with Trader Joe's, amazing company, but you know, we were talking and we're like, hey, are you, you know, do you see a vision for you know, online growth and a strategy? They're like, no, really, like, why would we try to do that when we can get these huge giant POs from, from you know, Trader Joe's and we're about to talk to, 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 to who was it, Target? And so, you know, it's tough. Like they didn't want to do that. And so literally we bring no value to anybody's table. And so it's like, hey, great business. The other thing is they had a, like a really big valuation. And I think that valuation, and that's something I want to talk about real quick because I was just watching Shark Tank last night. And in all these conversations that we're having with people, the question always comes to, what do you think your business is worth? You want the truth? I'll tell you the truth. The truth is that as an entrepreneur, one of the hardest things to wrap your brain around is that your business that you love is not as valuable as you think it is. And you see this all the time on Shark Tank. Now, the truth is that Shark Tank, a lot of times, does not value businesses appropriately or properly. They're just looking at it from a revenue standpoint, right? Like, okay, you're coming in saying your business is worth 10 million. You did a million last year. Your business is only worth a million. That's not the truth either. It's somewhere in the middle. It's not as big as you think it is, but it's also probably not as small as like somebody like Shark Tank would actually, would actually do. And a lot of it is, is upside. Like what is the potential? What is the trajectory? Are you flat? Have you been going down? Or are you going up and climbing? What is the profit margin? Are you taking a salary? Like there are a lot of different things that are actually figured into that. But the one thing you need to understand is that you need to figure out what metrics you are going to try to value your business. And just because you're doing X number of dollars in sales does not mean that that gross revenue should be multiplied by three or four in order to give you the, the value of that business. There is nuance, there is finesse in valuing your company, depending on if you're a subscription model. Like if you're a subscription model, like T. Shanley, your company is more valuable typically because it's reoccurring revenue. But if you're a company like Pete and Pedro, you know, maybe it's not because each month you're starting from zero again. 
Now, it doesn't mean that one is better than the other, but from a value perspective, if somebody is coming in to invest or buy your business, the subscription model is definitely a valuable model. And that's the reason why Dollar Shave Club got bought for like a billion dollars because they had all these people, 2.5 million people that were each month getting products. And so this company, Unilever, was it Unilever? Unilever, I believe. They said, okay, hey, we'll buy it. We're buying your customer base because we know that we can just add more products to the mix and your client or your, your customer is going to be more valuable. But they knew that they still had people that were, that they had 2.5 million people each month that were getting boxes. That revenue is you know, almost like a benchmark and it's consistent and then you grow accordingly. But for you to go and look for money or ask for money, you really need to have a good idea of what your business is actually worth. And do not think it's worth as much as you think it's worth because truthfully, it's probably not. I'm sure there are scenarios where businesses are worth more or more valuable than you think it is, but most people overestimate that if I'm being honest. I do it, like everybody does it. Like I think T.J. Lee's worth $500 million. No, it's not. <laughs> but that'd be cool if somebody thought it was because then I'd be like, here's the keys, I'll see you later, deuces, your face looks handsome. Anyway, this vlog is all over the freaking place. There was only one business question from last vlog. Guys, if you've got a business question, doesn't matter the industry, doesn't matter the question, start it with business question and ask your question down below. Um, next week, I definitely want to get to more of your business questions, all right? I wanted to just tell you about Area 627 that we have invested. We decided on one person that we are investing in. I will tell you what that business is after we actually tell the individual what that we're actually doing this and that we are going to be investing in his business. But it's really cool. His product is super awesome. It's also very inexpensive in order to produce it. I think it costs like 70 cents and he sells it for $15. And it's something where there's a very targeted audience, which is good because if you can figure out who that audience is, where they live, and then actually just advertise to them through digital marketing, it's like, it's like a home run. And so we feel like we can really help this guy who right now, I think he's doing around $130,000 a year. We think we can get him to a million like pretty easy. And because there is so much margin in the product, we can really be aggressive with the advertising. And right now, I think he's got a customer acquisition cost of around $7. We think we can get that down to probably closer to like three or four and really just you know, use our skill set. Ryan is amazing, like I said, at, at, um, at the paid advertising. We really feel like we can get this guy next level. He's also doing some other things that are wrong, which we'll talk about later. But um, I think this guy and this business, he's also just a great guy. You know, and that's the thing. And that is the type of entrepreneurs that we want to we wanna invest our time, hang out with, you know, and help, is, is people that really have just, they're good people. You know, we don't want people that are, you know, thinking, oh, well, our goal is to exit this in five years and this and that. We want to help people that have a passion for what they do, that are looking to do something amazing, and they're just having a tough time figuring out how to get it to that next level. We come in, little strategy, fix things that need fixing because there are some things with his business that definitely are not, are not maximized and streamlined that we can just tweak a few things, push a few levers, and all of a sudden he's going to be making a lot more money. There was, so I'll tell you more about that business later. Anyway, if you have a business and you need help strategically and you haven't raised money and you're like one or two possible owners, you're an LLC and you wanna come submit something, do it. Go to area627.com, fill out the application and roll the dice. Something else I wanna roll with is a business question from our friend Shane who asked me last week's business question, which rocked my world. What are the things that I had to give up in order to be successful? If you missed that video, guys, it was a good one. If I'm being honest, I watched it twice. <laughs> and when I watch my own videos, you know it's solid. Um, well, it's last week. Anyway, the business question is another good one. He says, as I see it, the most painful moment in a human being's life is that fraction of a second when they let go of their last thread of faith in their dreams. While starting and developing Tiege Hanley, did you ever lose hope that this would not be able to be, you would not be able to achieve your dreams and success? If you did lose hope or faith in your ability, what did you do to pull yourself out of that dark place? Another rock star question, Shane. Like seriously, 
Like, you're, you're like, you're, this is like, this is like therapy for me at this point. So the moment that I lost complete faith with my fitness center, that was a very, very dark, painful, pain, painful day. But, because that was my only dream for my entire life was to own a fitness center, right? But there was a point that I realized this isn't happening. It was when we were completely broke and realized, all right, this isn't going anywhere. What am I going to do next? That was one of the most painful things. And I remember I was, on a, I, was on a, I was driving a beer cart at that time, and I thought to myself, I'm like, I don't know what plan B is. And the worst part, it wasn't necessarily that, that the dream was gone. That was bad, but it had been really bad up until that point. And so it was kind of like a relief almost to some degree that it was like, okay, this is done. This is over. I got to figure out what's next. But the hard part was not knowing what plan B was. And so for me, it was just about, you know, I, I don't know. I need to figure it out. But, um, you know, it was definitely a dark and painful place. T. Shanley, no. We have had hard times, though. If I'm being honest, and that's kind of our thing here, we have had hard times where, you know, Rob Kelly and myself have been like, you know, where do we go from here? You know, what do we do? Things aren't, you know, amazing, something we messed up really bad. What do we do? But for us, it was always, it was never a function of, will we figure it out? It was, we need to figure it out. We need to get to work and figure things out. Because we believe in our vision, we believe in our, our community, and we believe in you. And so the fact that we have been as successful as we are, we've done something right, but getting to, like, and, and I don't remember who said it, like getting to $10 million is easy, but from 10 million to 20 million, yeah, that's where you're clawing and scratching and like, yo, right? And so that's kind of where, where we're at in terms of, you know, our, our growth as a company. You know, 10 million, we got there like pretty easy. Easy, easy is a relative term, right? It wasn't easy, but getting to 10 million, getting to 15, getting to 20, that's, that's where you got it, 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 it's, it's definitely harder. But we are very excited about the things that we're doing and do believe that we are and have figured some things out. Have we figured them out 100%? No. Are we doing better than we were six months ago? Yes. Have we figured more things out, added new people that are kicking ass and helping us figure it out? The answer is hell yeah. Guys, it's about surrounding yourself with people that are amazing, that are going to help you execute your dream. And also being strong enough as an individual, as a leader, as a company to identify things that aren't working and to cut it or to fix it or to, or to not go down the rabbit hole of self-destruction. Guys, you got to stay focused. You got to stay positive. But when things aren't working, it's hard, right? And I get it. It's very difficult. But if you're going to be successful, you've got to understand that, okay, this is temporary and you've got to get busy, get to work figuring shit out. Gentlemen, the one thing we have figured out is that you are amazing and we love you more than our double monk strap shoes. That is where I am wrapping things up. Guys, business question. Start it down below. Business question and start it. Ask, I should say ask it. And if you want one of these, <laughs> I should go buy like 30 of them just because I should because that's what you do when you're in magazines. I got this. I saw it. I was like, eh. <laughs> that kind of, it was disappointing. I wanted it about the salon. I didn't want it about me giving style tips like buy a pair of white minimal sneakers and take care of your skin, which were two of the five tips I gave, but whatever. All publicity is good publicity unless you do something really stupid. <laughs> I should, I should have thrown it. It's an honor being in here, but it's a little disappointing considering what my goal, expectation, and hope was. But you know, you should never assume because as they say, if you assume things, you will make an ass out of you and me.